Good evening. Welcome to the uh, April 10th, uh, 2010, 2024 Science uh, Park Recreation Meeting. Um, we are going to wait about five minutes uh, to see if we have uh, another, rep another member showing up so we have a quorum. So bear with us just five minutes. <laughs> yeah, there's like one of their brothers here. All right, uh, we will get started. Um, we'll uh, uh, call the order and we'll do uh, roll call. Uh, Ryan Cambridge, Vice President. Uh, Michael Kaufman is not here. Chris Barksdale. Here. Kimberly Lane is out sick. Chad Dilling is not here. Matt Milburn? Here. Uh, we have four, so we have a quorum. Um, first first item is approval of March 13th, 2024 minutes. Has anyone had a chance to review? Does anyone have any questions? Any questions? Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. We have a second. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. I abstain. Okay. So motion carries three to one abstain. And you weren't here last month, right? Right. Okay. All right. Um, next is a public presentation and comments. Does anyone would like to take a moment to speak to the board? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, please uh, state your state your name. Hi. Yes. Hi. Uh, EJ oh, well, when you get there, you state right. your name and address when you get to the podium. Thank you. So, uh, yes. So I'm a 2011 grad. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, EJ Williams here. <clears throat> EJ Williams here. Uh, I grew up in Zionsville, graduated in 2011. Uh, I went to Purdue, left state, worked a little bit, decided I wanted to move back to Zionsville. Uh, so I chose Zionsville as my home because I grew up here. <clears throat> wanted to give my kids the same kind of raising that I had. Uh, specifically, I like the fact that I can roam town safely. Uh, and the rail trail is what we're gonna talk about here, is a big part of it access to the rail trail. Um, the, what you just got, uh, so the, the, the house that I, that I got is actually pretty close to here. Uh, and it's a very unique property. It's got a, you know, a lot of feet next to the rail trail, but it's really hard to traverse to get to the trail. Uh, you can see the green is how I could get. It's like 150 feet really from the house to the trail. And um, I guess the, the point here is, uh, my dad and I built a bridge so that we could cross onto the trail. Uh, and it is technically not allowed. So um, the, what's in question here is whether residents um, can have structures to help them get to the trail. 
Um, right now, the rules, you know, state no. I think it's the same as a, a tree house, you know, per se. It's rule six in your in your rules. Um, and so my request, I'm not, I wasn't necessarily going to come here and ask for permission for my specific bridge. Uh, I was more wondering or like giving you guys the question of uh, in a situation like this, should we be allowed to have some kind of, of a device to help us get to the trail? You know, I think everyone agrees that access to the trail is important. I was talking to, you know, John Stair last week, and that was the first thing he said was, you know, more access to the trail. Um, Obviously, you're a huge investment uh, to the trail. You want people using it. You know, I've got my second kid on the way in a few months here, so we'll be pushing a stroller, and, um, you know, we need a, something to get to the trail. Uh, it's 0.8 miles. If we can't access it through that adjacent, you know, touching of the trail, um, it's a 0.8-mile walk. Uh, you know, that's how my wife goes to Kroger, how we go to Starbucks, how we get to Mulberry Fields. My dad is uh, a mile 1.4 miles up the trail. He's also on it. Uh, so that's how we get to his house. Um, we kind of need it. So we've been working closely with Jared to figure out a way uh, to, to kind of come to common ground here. Uh, we've talked a lot about maybe like a public easement through it. That's a longer conversation. I'm not against it. But um, my request is, uh, well, there is a proposed guidance for Jared to maybe approve of non-permanent uh, structures such as this. Uh, but, you know, I do think that I should ask for permission for you guys, whether it's this meeting or you guys think about it and, uh, next meeting we can talk about it again. Cause I know on the spot, it's kind of hard to approve something so quickly. Um, but it is a big question of, of, you know, should a single resident be able to have assisted access to that trail or should they have to walk 0.8 miles to one of the approved accesses? Uh, I'll leave it at that. We appreciate your response. You know, it, you know, the structure built on town property is not allowed, and you know that's. I'll stand beside that until things get you know um, set. You know, otherwise, right? Because mm -hmm. it's you. You know, you built something on property that's not yours. So yeah, it's not non-permanent. Kind of, it's not, not a permanent, permanent structure. So um, I haven't seen it yet, but you know, I heard it was pretty substantial building. You know, or. Uh, uh, yeah. bridge so um but um yeah it, it, unfortunately you know especially since we don't have a full you know all the board members here I would, we definitely want to need to have everyone involved to uh it is i mean it's a pretty big ravine i feel it i would build it smaller if i could uh but to get a stroller across you kind of have to have it that big when it comes to safety completely on board with doing all investment necessary to make it safe. So I don't think safety is a question because we'll do anything and everything to make it whatever safety you want. The question is whether it should be allowed. Right. Well, and um, I think a part of that, of, of whether it should, I mean, I would be, I'm in favor of, uh, I mean, let me, let me say this. If I lived where you lived, I'd want to be able to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. hundred percent. Um, I think a challenge, uh, and I can admit that readily, that like this is exactly what I would want. On the town side, um, you know, anything that exists on our property, any right of way, trails, parks, anything like that, we carry the liability for and have existing code of ordinances and development standards and building standards that the town has to follow for any sort of public project, whether it's a boardwalk or a intersection, right? Um, it's all very prescriptive, and that's just the way community development works. So to me, it's sort of a two-part question um, or, or two-part discussion. Um, if it is allowed, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, in my opinion, I, I think a case-by-case -case basis when it comes to structures is probably a better approach than a blanket approval. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, anything that would be built in the public right of way, whether it's by you or me or the town, has to meet those same mm -hmm. construction standards, right? Which, when it comes to fall heights and load bearing capacities and things like that, are fairly robust because the town carries the liability for those. So, you know, when I look at this structure, I'm like, that is exactly what I would have built. <laughs> like, that, like I can, I can wrap my brain around that. What would be required from a code standpoint is going to be much more substantial. I'll pay for it. You can build it. I'll build it. We'll build it to standards. Let's do it. <laughs> I don't have a. I don't have a skin in this game personally, but I think that that's 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 a part of it. Um, 
you know, is that anything built in the right of way has to meet those existing standards. Mm -hmm. And then anything in the right of way also is public. It is the public right of way. That's the purpose of it. And I'm not a proponent of making anything within a trail right of way private or privatizing green space. So I think a component of these access routes, and I have one actually behind my house. So I live um, in Vontera and back up on Overly Warman Park. Mm -hmm. um, we walk, in, you know, on the same deal, our property line backs up to the park, but there's no path there. So we have a little footpath that we lucky that we don't have to have a bridge, but we can just walk from our backyard into that little footpath onto the park trail. Well, I can't, and acknowledge this outright, I cannot get upset if somebody wants to walk that same footpath all the way up to my property line. Mm -hmm. It's not my path, even though it really only serves my house, it only leads to my house. You know, that sort of restrictive use does not transition until you reach my personal property, right? So I think that that's the other component, because I'm not, as soon as you privatize, um, especially in this case, which is a perpendicular easement across a linear corridor, you've now bifurcated that corridor. So I think that that's a whole nother sort of discussion of if it is going to exist in the public right of way, it has to be built to the standards that the town would build themselves to, so that we can assume the liability for them. Um, and I think it has to remain a public access. I mean, anybody can use it for whatever purpose they want, just like you could go to the stairs in Starkey and play your guitar on the stairs if you want to. I mean, mm -hmm. that's not really the intended use, but it's public property and, you know, you can do that. Um, now, can that, does that mean in any instance, can someone pass from park property or public right of way onto your personal property? No, that's trespassing, but they can go right up to it. That's you know? no problem with me. Right. So I think that those are yeah. just two sort of, you know, and again, I'm not, I don't think we're in a position yeah, to have a full discussion on this tonight. But I think those are sort of two prerequisites to any further discussion is that whatever's built has to meet standard and it has to be public. And then how we do it, when we do it, who does it, who pays for it, and then in the long term, who pays to maintain it, I think are all things that are negotiated on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes. And what does it mean to be public, though? Uh, I proposed a sitting area uh, that's not too far off because you don't want it to be too secluded uh, that could give purpose for an investment. And there used to be a bench at this this turn right here. There used to be a small little wooden bench. It's no longer there. Um, so there is there. You could replace that with a sitting area that's kind of elevated, nice little you know pad to rest. So I did propose a public use and purpose for a bridge, and I'd make the investment to develop yeah, that sitting I area. I don't know that. And I guess in the, in this in your particular example, I don't know that there has to be public value to that amenity, provided the public dollars aren't being spent to build or maintain it. Mm -hmm. It just is going to remain publicly accessible. I mean, it's a dead end trail, but I would suppose you would probably I don't yes. know if you have a fence or, you know, if you had a fence, there'd be a gate. If you didn't, there'd probably be a sign that says private property to be on this point. But anything up to that point would, in my personal opinion, should remain public. I agree. Um, yes. So, you know, I don't know that you need to necessarily create value on there if you're not asking the town for money to build it. It's just something to consider with any of these paths that any, you know, if my kids want to go run on and, you know, that's, if it's public property, it's public property. Okay. So it's the answer to the question is, can we do like a 40 foot dead end path that's public? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Are you, are you suggesting, are you suggesting this path should be public or are you suggesting that this would be private? I guess no, this is what the question I would not is. expect to steal your land, okay. but <laughs> this is your land. And other people can use the bridge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah totally. The other question I would have is like, where I don't. I would like to know where where it butts up. Is it just go to? Is it in between houses? Is it at the end of the street? Is it just behind your house? Just behind my house. Yeah, yeah. So when I mentioned public pri uh, or public, um, there's a, something we haven't talked about yet. Uh, you know, Jared would really like to see, which I don't blame him, an easement go through my property to get to eventually Zion Nature Center, which is awesome. I am actually on board with that. The only thing is getting through my property is not the easiest easement to think to do. Um, and it, you know, where it juts up is very like much my backyard. Um, so we'll I have to get my wife on board for something like that. Uh, and anyway, that's a long-term decision, but, um, I guess to answer your question. Yeah. It doesn't really go anywhere. It would definitely be just like a dead end spot or, you know, a sitting area. Uh, when it comes to security, you know, there's ways to, you know, make sure that it's motion sensor lit if, if there's any motion. Because I know you don't want anything too secluded off the path, right, is one thing that Jared was mentioning. We've been talking closely with him throughout this process. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think at the end of the day, that's that's where I think our ultimate consideration is. You know, it, it, we would want anyone to access the trail any way they can, but it can't come at the expense of public value or public safety. So I think that that's part of the bigger discussion. So, you know, are we creating an attractive nuisance if there is a dead end path where, you know, you, yes, you can go back there and guess what, you can't be seen, so who knows what's gonna go on? Or, you know, um, y y a future homeowner might have an issue with that connection, right? Which is why, you know, a dedicated easement or something like that, I would not necessarily be in favor of. Um, but, um, but I think at the end of the day, those are the considerations that are most important to us. And we're not, these are not decisions, in my opinion, that we're even making. We're bound by the development standards of the town that we didn't create. Mm -hmm. You know, and whether this was a, on public works right of way or park right of way, you'd be having the same discussion with the same set of standards and, you know, it being a temporary structure or a non-permanent structure. I think, I don't actually know what the verbiage is in our code, but that's usually time limited. So for example, when I'm a landscape architect and we've worked on re uh, resort properties or things like that, where there's temporary facilities to, to, to permit those appropriately and legally, there's a time limit on how long that amenity, whatever it is, deck or bridge or whatever can be in place. Mm. So they're usually not forever if it's temporary. So if it is forever or whatever longer than that period is, that's when you sort of trip into, well, then you have to build it like you would build a boardwalk, right? Or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's prescriptive standards for that. Okay. Well, it sounds, I mean, obviously we're not making any big decisions tonight or any of the decisions, but it sounds like the, what you're telling me is that maybe there is a route here that is, you know, a public path, but it's a you know 40 foot public path that's developed properly. Um, Cause it, an easement through the property was another question. Like, do you feel like there is a required easement through my property to give purpose to this? I, I don't see that those are two, I think those are two separate yeah, discussions. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think where it, you know, so the parks everywhere are underfunded. Every park system needs more money than we have. So every dollar that is in our approved budget um, is already allocated somewhere, right? So if you said, hey, I'm going to build this bridge the way you want us to build it, I'm not going to ask you for any easements, I'm not going to, you know, I just want to have it there. And if you want to come stand on it and play your guitar, fine, whatever. But, you know, I want it there um, and I'm going to pay for it. To me, that's sort of like something we might be able to handle through an agreement, right? That just says, here's, you know, we're going to allow you to do this, but here are the terms we have, and here's the things you have to agree to, and that's it. Um, but I don't see that as because it doesn't, it really only benefits you short of an easement. And some neighbors, but yeah. Well, tech, I mean, legally, it only benefits Correct. you, you Correct. and the people you allow to use it, right? Yeah, that's In theory, right. Yeah. right. Because there's no real recreational value for walking 40 feet perpendicular to a trail, but, but it definitely benefits people who can use it. Um, so, you know, if, if, if it, the cost is to the town is zero, then to me, it's just a matter of making sure we're covered from a liability standpoint, a health and safety standpoint, and an infrastructure standpoint, which Agreed. is all prescriptive standards for that. Yeah. Seems okay. logical to me. Yeah. So now if you, the bigger discussion is if you build those bridges, which I understand there actually has to be two, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the same standards would apply to both, but you'd have to build two. Um, at some point in the future, you could say, well, we could negotiate an easement through yeah, yeah. and they would be using bridges that are already built to code anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so that, that to me is sort of a separate issue. I think, no, this is great. Uh, I think what you just said is exactly what I would hope, right? I don't expect you guys to accept my bridge as is, right? You have liability. So, um, if we can work on an agreement, uh, that, you know, we fund it, do it to your codes and everything that you like. I was wondering, would you prefer we do it, I fund it and build it to your codes or would you want me to donate the money for the purpose of you building no. it? I mean, I think this is, you know, um, it, it's not just the money. It's also who, whoever builds it does assume liability for it. Also. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. that's not something I think would be in the best interest. Of okay. Who do, for. how do I get that ball rolling? I know it's a long process. Um, I would reach out to the building department. I mean, their, okay. their code is going to govern deck structures, boardwalks, elevated timber structures, footings, frost depths, all that stuff. Okay. Joist spacing. You'll need to pull permits to do that. And obviously if I needed but your before approval, any of that, he's going to need to come back and get us to approve it. 
right? He's you're gonna, like I would yes. think he's going to need to co- you're going to need to come with a proposal for what needs right. done and yep. get us yep. to approve mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I Civil. think so. I, I don't think you have to get a permit to do it. I think you have to understand here's what it is going to look like. Yeah, yes, you he's going to need to come Drawings, up with a design, some sort stand, of you know, this yeah. is what and we're going we'll to do. Have something to basically do it, you know, to approve. And then I'm sure okay. the yeah. you know the the inspectors will want to look at it and just say yeah it meets the code. And right. then we're going okay. to want to get feedback, obviously, from other people with any concerns and. Um, okay. No, this is great. I'll do that. So uh, not an outright no. It's just you know if it is built on public property, it has to follow the same standards that any other public project would. That's perfect. I'll find a civil engineering firm. We'll do it right. Yeah, yeah. that will probably be an easy project for them. They'll be excited. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, thank you guys. I won't take any more time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Oh, I mean, no, we'll take it all if you got liability. Should I ask to keep it in place, or do I need to t- remove the bridge? Uh, I'm, the town's not going to let. Yeah, you I'll remove the place. bridge. Yeah. Sorry. Can I have till Can I have till uh, the weekend to remove the bridge? I think that's yes. Good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking at Jared. And like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter to me. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks. And again, just it's all about at the end of the day. Public Stewards safety. of the land and yep. public safety. Yeah. I mean, I would want exactly what you want. <laughs> so. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other comments? Questions? Right. Uh, staff report. Superintendent of Park and Recreation, Jerry. Thank you, John. Good evening, Park Board. Uh, just a couple of items to update the board and community on from the superintendent report. Last month, you'll recall, we purchased recycled material picnic tables for the Mulberry Field shelters. Happy to say that we were awarded a $10,000 grant from the Boone County Solid Waste District. Um, so those funds will supplement and offset some of that cost from last month's purchase. Excellent. Um, also happy to report that Shelter A has been repaired and put back into public use. So the shelter was available for our DJ during the Total Eclipse event at Mulberry Field. So extremely happy with the end product and that that was able to be complete before our largest event in park history. If you have been on the Big Four Rail Trail, you'll likely have seen the mile markers that now join um, our completed rail trail. So all across Boone County, there are now half mile increment mile markers along our Big Four Rail Trail. Um, Those are great for uh, spacing out your runs, but more importantly, they're for emergency services that can utilize those points to have better um, response time. So uh, that was a gift from the Boone County Community Foundation. So we're really appreciative of that project and now that it's complete on our trail. Um, speaking of trails, uh, survey work has been completed on the Turkey Foot Bridge, so now moving more so into design of what that uh, improvements to the bridge will look like. And as those concepts uh, begin to form, we'll uh, share information with the board. And finally, uh, this Monday, we did have the total eclipse of the park event at Mulberry Fields, and we had 17 states and one Canadian license plate in the parking lot. So. Certainly welcoming people from the region and beyond. And I just want to give a special kudos to Mindy Murdoch, our Director of Recreational Services, and Megan Ray, our Special Events Coordinator, that threw an exceptional event to a large crowd of people. So I want to thank them both. And that is all from the we'll, superintendent. We'll second that. It was tremendous. A yeah, great job for everybody. We were there as well. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's good. Yeah, Excellent. And that is all from the superintendent report. Excellent. Thank you, Jared. Director of Maintenance Services. Good evening. All righty. So for the month of March, uh, we had zero incidents of graffiti, which is always great news. Uh, We transported uh, golf carts from winter storage to the Zinesville golf course, as well as moving those back and forth along with mowers for spring maintenance. And we prepped butterfly wings for the upcoming butterfly trail installations. Along the big four, we did some trimming of some red maple trees near Oak Street Tunnel. We replaced some yields and stop signs along the trail in the North Trailhead. We removed winter reflective markers from the manhole covers. We re- cleared storm drains and uh, the pat- hardscape paths of debris. Uh, we dug out, seeded, and strawed a 500-foot section of roadside uh, stormwater drainage along the northern end of the rail trail. And we had a weed wrangle at the Pine Street entrance uh, along with Boone County Invasives clearing invasive bush honeysuckle. At the American Legion Trail Crossing, we've had a persistent rut near the parking lot that we've filled, seeded, and strawed, and coned off so that that can get some uh, grass grown in it. And we reset some pavers in the hardscape walking path. 
At Creekside Nature, uh, we treated some invasive lesser celandine, taking special care to avoid the spring ephemerals. We replaced dog waste stations and signage and cleared fallen debris and trees from the hardscape paths. At Elm Street, we installed these storyboards for the library story walks. We added and replaced some park boundary signage. Uh, we applied pre-emergent to some of the flower beds. We blew leaves and debris uh, from hardscape paths, repaired a large crack in the path down in the lower section. Uh, then we added container soil and did some, uh, conducted the spring till and parcel plotting for the community gardens. At Heritage Trail, uh, same thing, conducted spring till and uh, parcel plotting for the community gardens, and we had some EWF playground mulch installed at the playground, and we repaired the snow fence around the tree nursery there. At Lincoln Park, we had to do some repair to the water meter pit and backflow plumbing in anticipation of the spring activation. At Mulberry Fields, we replaced some bork and bowler replaced some broken boards in the boardwalk. Uh, and at Shelter A, we set that back up after the contractor repair and repaired some picnic tables. Uh, and we installed the pickleball nets. At Overly Warman, we had the EWF playground mulch delivered. Uh, we cleared some fallen trees from the disc golf course. And we installed and replaced some additional mountain bike trail signage. At Starkey, uh, basic clear fallen trees and debris from the natural surface trails. At the tennis court and tot lot, we patched a hole from the utility installation there before handing that off to Lions. At Turkey Foot, we had a weed wrangle uh, that was done alongside the Zionsville High School Climate Club. Uh, treated invasive lesser celandine, again taking special care to avoid spring ephemerals. Uh, cleared fallen debris uh, from the paths. And at Village Corner, we applied pre-emergent to the flower beds. Is that all? <laughs> Regular day to day as well. Just last weekend. So. Fantastic work as Great. always. Busy season, but thank you. Exciting. It's good to see spring. Appreciate it. At least yeah. there was no uh, graffiti this time, right? Wait till next month. All right now. Now I said that, right? <laughs> thank you for your hard work. Director of Rec Recreational Services, Mindy. All right. Good evening, everyone. So March brought us in with uh, 1,567 walk-ins at the Zionsville Nature Center. So we're still going strong. Um, we actually had a pretty busy uh, spring break as well. So it'll be interesting to see what that looks like for April. Um, just highlighted a few of the programs for their March. Uh, one, we kicked off our first ever PEEPS, which is our um, preschool environmental education program series. Um, so that one had 10 that participated in that one. And so we will um, continue those through the spring and take a break, of course, for summer because we'll have plenty of camps to deal with and then kind of reevaluate. Do we need to change the date, times, things of that and bring it back into the fall? So but so far, some very positive feedback on that one. Uh, we did environmental science merit badge uh, workshop at the Nature Center on March 23rd, which was a, a packed crowd. So a lot of boys getting their, uh, their merit badges in so they can work on their way to Eagle. We had a Dino Egg Ventures. So this is as close as I'm ever going to get to an egg hunt <laughs> um, at Elm Street Green. Uh, thankfully, you know, we opened it up for about 25 kids. It filled immediately. So we opened it for another 25 and wrangled in uh, Jared Got to Play as well as some of the naturalist staff to help us, um, but had a lot of fun. I don't know if you saw the social media posts of basically going on a scavenger hunt with a dinosaur, looking for eggs, doing some dinosaur activities, and we got to try out some of the new toys that we purchased for the Creek Stomper this year. So speaking of which, the Creek Stomper is out of storage. Um, we held our first park and play, and she was also on hand during the eclipse. So camp registration is going well. There's only a few spots left. We also got an e-bike and a bike trailer for our park use. Um, so the staff are already trying to figure out ways that they can you know, load up things and travel to different places to do programming on the e-bike. So as soon as the weather kind of stays consistent, you'll probably see us out on about on the rail trail. Um, the biggest one, of course, Jerry kind of talked about it, was total eclipse of the park. So we estimate about over 2,500 people. So to date, that is our biggest event here in Zionsville as far as through the parks department, um, about 17 different states and just some really great feedback from everyone that went off. And not much I would change differently from the event itself. We had a little hiccups with some of the food trucks 
had some parts break and running out of pizza pretty quickly, but we got it figured out. So I think other than Star Wars not showing up, unfortunately, there was nothing else we would have changed. But, um, but it was fun because it got let us play a little with social media. So if you didn't see the, uh, you know, the mooned video that we did where we basically, you know, mooned all of Zionsville with the police, the fire, and even the mayor getting to participate in that one um, with our countdown and then actually setting a rain date just in case um, about 129 years later. But we set a rain date for everybody. So um, what's coming up next? Uh, we have our butterfly trail returning for the third year. So the artists have been identified and they've been notified and should start picking up their wings on Friday for them to complete those and get them back to us by the end of May so we can get that up for the summer. And then next is Green Fest, which will be Saturday, April 27th. Um, it's actually moving from Town Hall because of early voting, so we will be at Elm Street Green that day for that event. But otherwise, unless you guys have any questions. Great job as always. Thanks. Getting them educated. All right, uh, golf course manager. How's the golf course? Uh, the golf course is all right. Um, so we opened up March 11th. Um, in March, our revenue was uh, $38,555. So that compared to 2023 of $11,000 was pretty good. So yeah. So to date, we're at $92,000. 770, um, $721. So um, in the month of March, we sold 41 more season passes to bring our total for the year to 171 or 173 total season passes for the year, which is five or $55,920 in season passes. Um, so 101 more season passes this year than last year. So um, 1,130 rounds in March compared to 291 in uh, 2023. So we're kind of pretty good March. Um, the new reels, um, Mike Coker, who's uh, the magic man back there in maintenance, does a great job, who you'll hear about more soon. Um, put the reels on our um, team mower. Um, the irrigation system uh, was pressurized on March 27th. Um, the, the irrigation that I talked about from B&H um, was um, the irrigation pumps was taken care of here April 1st. Um, and the irrigation heads that we had um, broken during the construction with the cart pass, that, that was quoted and that has been repaired as of March 31st as well. So, um, yeah, so we're going great guns. Off to a good start. Yeah. So, any questions? Fantastic. Questions. questions? Nope. Yeah. Fingers Thank crossed you, for a good season weather-wise. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Cool. For good, cool. Good, good April here. So. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Next up, uh, Amy Parks Turning. Sure. Um, well, I've been reviewing the agreements that will be before you under um, new business and drafting mm -hmm. additional agreements and easements, but those will all be addressed under new business. And right. I don't have anything other than that. Very good. Hey, Jared, um, since I see we have a special guest and his uh, amount of time, do you think it's all right we go ahead and push him up? Absolutely. Okay. Sure. All right. I'd uh, like to uh, um, welcome uh, Mayor Stair as, a, as an administration update for us. Well, thank you. It's good to be back at the Parks Board. Is, I, it, uh, is it weird to be down there? It is a little bit <laughs> strange. It's a little bit strange. Um, you know, things are going great guns at the golf course, and, you know, we've had a great year so far. The weather has been pretty good up until the recent rain, and, you know, I, I think that we shouldn't let that obscure the fact that, that Mike is doing a great job running the course. 
Our employees are doing a great job running the course. And I'm here to tell you tonight, the contract has been signed and um, pretty soon they won't be our employees anymore because the management transition has begun at the golf course. The effective date is this Friday, April 12th, and that was to meet the HR pay period cycles and all that and, and give the new group a, an opportunity to take over and, and have a little bit of a run at it. Now, before I discuss what this means to the Parks Department, I think I just want to go through a brief history, if that's okay. Uh, the course op opened in 1961, and it was under private management for nearly 50 years. The town bought it in 2007 and put it under the Parks Department to manage it, but unlike other parks properties, it's not owned by the Parks Board. It's still owned by the town. The Parks Department has had mixed success managing the course over the years. The last several years have been really good years, but before that we had some, some down years. And I think a lot of that is due to the constraints of being a municipality and the fact that it's, it's really different than anything the department does. A golf course is a business, most parkland is passive, and it's a complete outlier from what the parks department does. So we hired Mike Wall as course manager a couple of years ago, and he has done a great job despite the challenges presented to him operating under a municipal government structure. Again, it's not always compatible with the best business practices. So we put out an RFP to consider golf course management, and we've negotiated a deal with Zionsville National to take over management of the course. That's a local group headed by Mike, uh, Pete Proust, and Paul Kite, who are all in the room tonight. Uh, and here are the key terms of what we've agreed to with them. Uh, all current season passes will be honored in full. Uh, no change in any course fees for the 2024 season, and only slight changes tied to the consumer price index in odd-numbered years after that, so 2025, 27, 29, et cetera. Uh, schedules for all league play will remain the same at the course. Both of our middle schools will continue to use it uh, for practices and matches. The summer camp schedule will remain the same. This is something that was very important to a lot of our constituents. And to me, too, because I think the golf course is a gem. I think it's a, a great thing that we have in town that we can offer people. And um, it it's, was so important to me and I think to uh, Paul and Pete and Mike that, that we continue along the same path. Now, under terms of the agreement, uh, Zinesville National is going to give the town 10% of the revenue from greens fees with a minimum of $50,000 a year. In 2024, 100% of that money is going to go into Golf Course Fund 680. And Fund 680 is the place where all the proceeds from the golf course in previous years have been kept to benefit the golf course. In 2025, 75% of the proceeds will go into Fund 680. 25% will go into Fund 211, which will support parks programming. And then starting in 2026 and every year after that, the money split will be 50-50 between Fund 680 and Fund 211. Now here's what the Parks Board role is going to be. Even though you're no longer going to have direct supervision on the day-to-day -day operation, operations, there is a significant role to play in the golf course. Zionsville National will give you a financial report each year. If Zionsville National wants to do a capital improvement project at the golf course over $50,000, such an improvement needs to be approved by the board. Now, for any capital improvement up to $100,000, the board can vote to match dollar for dollar out of fund 680, up to a maximum of $100,000 a year until that fund is depleted. Now, as I mentioned, uh, these guys will take over on Friday, April 12th. Now, to be clear, uh, the management contract was entered into by the town with Zionsville National. The Parks Board is not a party to that agreement so there's no action required on your part tonight. However, you will be called on to participate in the future, as I've mentioned, on uh, voting on matching dollars for capital improvements. Uh, as we have said tonight, the, the golf course is off to a great start to the season. Uh, I expect nothing but uh, a smashing success with uh, Paul and Pete and Mike being at the helm. And uh, if you have any questions, I would love to take them on. I guess the one question I have is uh, some of the assets, like you know, the mower that we bought and that kind of stuff. How did, what what well, happens with that? That's that's part of the contract okay. that uh, we're asking Zionsville National to follow the maintenance schedule as prescribed by the manufacturer. But other than that, uh, these those pieces of equipment are there for their use. 
Um, what was uh, maybe for the benefit of the record, the duration of the agreement signed? It's a five-year contract, uh, but if there is a capital improvement that takes place uh, over a certain amount, the contract is then extended up to five years more. So it'll never be longer than a five-year term, but it can be extended based on uh, capital improvements. And one of the capital improvements I know that they're looking at making is drainage. You know, if you've been out there at all, you know that there are some drainage issues that need to be addressed. Um, and facilities uh, could be addressed too. A new clubhouse, a new maintenance facility. I think uh, all of those things are on their radar and we hope to see, you know, some good things happen there in the next few years. Fantastic. Very good. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for clarifying. Well, sure. Yes. Chad. Oh, Hi, yes. Chad. Chad. I didn't know you were there. Well, Chad, I appreciate you saying that, but, but I would be remiss if I didn't point out that Mike Wall is a tremendous golf course manager, and uh, Pete lives on the golf course. It's his backyard, and he cares about that course more than anybody else, and Paul is a great partner to Pete, and I, I just really believe that uh, with those guys at the helm and keeping all the key employees that we've had over the past several years, uh, the golf course is just going to continue to thrive and, and continue to be better and better each year. Beyond a win-win. It's a win-win for sure. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. I thank appreciate you. it. Thanks, John. All right. Uh, next is um, receipt of uh, Carpenter Nature Preserve maintenance barn bids. Thank you, John. Uh, as you recall, several months ago, we began the discussion of how to lease the maintenance facility. So uh, with the acquisition of the Carpenter Nature Preserve, there was a tenant of the previous owners that was performing out of the shop on the site. Um, and the parks system and golf course, as Mike mentioned, have benefited from those services throughout the years. And uh, due to state statute, we had several uh, steps we had to follow to authorize that continued tenancy and lease um, on the present. So uh, we did have a public notice in the, in the paper concerning the leasing of these facilities, and we did receive one bid and we do have that bidder in the audience tonight if there are any questions but i will read uh, the bid received and we can discuss that as a park board um, in, uh, name mike coker sole proprietor 743 hadley pass westfield indiana 46074 intended use of real estate to continue servicing and repairing zionsville parks district equipment and zionsville golf course equipment within my capacities in a timely manner as I have done for the past year and a half. When time permits, I also take in service and repair of private individuals, mowers, golf carts, and et cetera. Most of the private work is in the Zionsville, benefits Zionsville residents in the 900 East area. Proposed, services, proposed service in lieu of partial or total rent payment proposed use of real estate bidders financial statement. The gentleman's agreement we, the town and I, have had for the past year and a half has worked well for both entities. I've been able to provide a necessary service to the local residents as well as offer a prefer preferential service to the owner's equipment in a very timely manner and a reduced labor rate and a 0% markup on parts I have purchased. My labor rate is half of what is charged by other local area turf equipment suppliers. Unlike the other companies providing equipment service and repair, you, the owner, are my main most important customer and will go to the head of the line. Being as I am at the building five or six days a week, I provide security for the building, and I have repaired and maintained several items uh, within the building at no additional labor charge. I repaired the furnace and patched holes in the insulation so pipes don't freeze, and make sure the building is secure when I leave. Because I've worked here since 2001, I have a wealth of knowledge about this and other buildings as well as the property in general. Due to the value I provide to the owner, I propose a lease rate of $1 per year. Certified check is enclosed to cover the first year's lease. I have complete peace about your decision, John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. 
Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Respectfully, Mike Coker. Um, so that was the, the bid we have received, and I'll defer to Amy as far as next steps concerning um, a bid received that is lower than the rate that we set and public, publicly posted. Mm -hmm. If you accept um, a bid that's less than 90% of the average of the two appraised values, we just need to publish an additional notice to that effect. So that's one part of it. And the second part is you had decided that you wanted to put in the bid advertisement that you would accept um, proposed services in lieu of rent. So it sounds like that's what your bidder has done, is proposing services in lieu of rent. You can decide you know, what the value of those services is an amount of that. Um, the rent proposed is one dollar and then if the reduction in service rate equals the proposed rental rate that you had advertised you could accept that bid. And then your next step would be to authorize me to negotiate a lease that would outline all the terms. That would be before you at the next meeting. Do we know what uh, like last year what we spent with him? I was uh, going to pull that information, but uh, since he does offer such a fantastic rate, I think the better comparison is what we've spent at, with other uh, providers, and that would be exponentially different. Do you, um, because I don't have a sense of the volume of those transactions, would you say that the value that we obtain with the professional or with the preferential service and the, the reduced labor rate is in excess of thousand dollars a year or eight hundred dollars a year or ten thousand dollars a year I would I would if I had to ballpark I would say it was just under three thousand that we were invoiced uh, last year for services and parts uh, which comparatively would be astronomically more uh, going to a retailer or something like that so we can certainly get those numbers to you um, as we consider this this lease um, I think you know, every spring and every fall and whenever anything breaks, we're, we're bringing it to Mike Coker if that's something that we can do. Um, I think we could also incorporate some preventative maintenance routine uh, practices that maybe we do in-house or contract out that be, to be a part of that schedule if there is some discrepancy. Do, do you what? have any... Well, let me add a caveat to my discussion. I, I think what Amy was saying is that if we can quantify, even at an order of magnitude level in this meeting, that the value provided by the in-kind services exceeds that of the minimum bid requirements, then we don't have to publish a public notice. Exactly. That's correct. So yeah. if yeah, we... So I, yeah, we're all on the same page. So what is the average, 90% yeah, of the that's average? the question at this point. We don't know what, the, you know, we don't know what we've done this well, if we, if we know we well, spent three thousand dollars last year, mm -hmm. we we're invoiced three thousand. But Let's what were the bids? What, what were the the two quotes we got? Five hundred bucks and I think I think we. Like, I can't remember those numbers. It was yeah, like so. five and nine hundred. I thought. Yeah, it's, it's, or five. I mean, it was. I thought it was more like twenty five hundred or some something way higher. Fifteen hundred numbers. Yeah, sure, so. little... but we only have to meet the lowest. No, I thought it was ninety percent of the average. 90%. Oh, ninety percent of the average. Yeah. average. Okay. So then, to Chad's point. If that seems like a tough road to hoe, we might as well just start with a public notice. So I guess the big key is what is 90% of the average? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need right there. And we can, we can pull all of this data, and then we'll have the information we need of which path to choose should you vote to approve the road, and then we know which way uh, in the fork to go should there be two alternatives, if that makes sense, my metaphor there. If we were to skip figuring out how much it was and we just published the notice, what is the worst thing that could happen? We have a month. Well, you don't, you don't, you're not publishing a notice to receive any more bids or anything. Right. It's just a notice that goes out there. The notice I simply says say we're look, accepting a bid that's less than 90% of the average of the two. 
However, you know, if Jared can quantify the differential between what you paid last year for services and what you would have paid for services somewhere else, which, which Jared is saying is astronomically different, you know, um, then, you know, we could use that and work. But it just seems like extra strategy. work for Jared. 100%. Yeah. So yeah. my thought is, if he's saying 3000 a year, that's 250 bucks a month. That seems a hard way to get to 1000 bucks a month even. Right. So like if it seems like why are we pulling the numbers, let's just publish the notice. Yeah. We can do that. Exactly. Exactly. Either way, at this point we're gonna be next month anyhow, because I mean, so, we don't have the numbers yet. So this allows us we publish this now, allows us we can be able to then you know yeah. be, be so, easier. Or, you need a motion then to accept the bid. Accept the bid and, and authorize you to negotiate a lease, lease. and publish a notice no. saying yeah. we're accepting. Saying you're accepting a bid, yes, yep. less than 90%. Do we have a motion? I okay. make a motion to accept the one sole bid presented and to authorize uh, Park Board Council to just begin negotiating a lease um, with the bidder as well as to publish uh, any required regulatory notices related to the bid acceptance. I'll so, second move. <laughs> that was real quiet. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Carries. All right, um, next is Lion Park Connector Easement. Thank you. So over the past several months, we have been working closely with the Lions Park uh, Board to solidify a creekside easement that would allow for a shared use path between Elm Street Green and Lions Park. This was made possible now that the Lions Park is the owner of the five acres that was in between our two parks. So. Uh, we have worked out those terms and uh, submitted to you all and shared was a greenway path and creek management easement that we uh, will have for your consideration this evening. Uh, this is in draft, draft form and might have additional comments from the legal team representing the Lions Park as well. But uh, the general terms are that, um, let me scroll down here to the exhibit. So um, we believe that we can successfully complete a uh, trail to our standards and setbacks within a hundred feet of the middle of the creek. So that is the proposed easement along Lyons property, both within the park today, as well as that five acres that would connect to uh, Elm Street Green. So within that hundred feet, we are uh, not only requesting the easement for the establishment of the trail, as well as the continued maintenance and perpetuity, but also the uh, management of the creek. So this is our first official request to have a maintenance agreement for Creekside property. Um, and if you've been following conversations in our community, this is a standard I'd like to see moving forward as we discuss the comp plan and potentially making this a value in our community that would implement uh, future code and ordinance controls. So um, this is an example of some of those terms uh, within the, the document that was shared. Uh, so mentioning the removal of invasive species, the promotion of um, native species and biodiversity, as well as addressing egregious erosion concerns. So all things we're doing in our parks already, this would just allow us to help the Lions Park uh, do that on their property as well. Because remember, uh, Lions Park is owned and operated by a volunteer board and it takes a lot of volunteers to maintain the footprint they have today and they're looking to expand that even further. So I feel we're all in this together to promote public spaces and green space. Uh, so our values are very much aligned with this. Um, so for your consideration to move forward with negotiating the Lions Park Connector Trail easement with the Lions Park Board and um, upon your approval, have John, the Park Board President, execute that on the Park Board's behalf. Happy to answer any questions related to this. Long time coming. Yep. Yeah. Great. So, I don't think you have any questions. Do we have a motion to um, approve the Lions Park connector easements? I'll make the motion. I'll okay. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. And uh, another item related to that connector project is the store and parcel. So um, in years past, these storms have actually granted a pathway easement to the park board 
Um, and this was the first link that we needed to get between Elm Street and Lions Park. So they were actually the precursor and some of the early momentum to this long-term goal. Um, at such time, they also placed a right of first refusal, refusal on that easement, uh, which actually did complicate uh, some of their matters later down the line, and the park board was brought into conversations about real estate transactions. So uh, they have come before us and would like to revise their existing easement that they've granted to the park board. Um, currently, let me just pull up that document real quick. So currently the uh, store and easement is larger than that 100 feet we discussed uh, with the Lions Park easement. Um, so their uh, request is to one, remove that right of first refusal that is on the easement, and then second, to have the easement match um, the easement distance we are establishing with the Lions Park team. So um, I believe this is a, a good faith act on the park board to uh, grant those two requests. We're still accomplishing our goal. Um, we're actually able to, uh, through negotiating, widen the trail. So the current easement had a limitation of 10 feet but our standards have evolved over time and we would prefer a 12 foot at this time. Um, and the storms are open to that as well. So it would be a, a similar easement to what was just, will be passed with the Lions Park concerning Creek maintenance as well as the pathway. So you need a motion to amend the um, agreement with the storms, for lack of a better word. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, so. I think it might be one layer more complicated and I'll defer to Amy at, as the, cause there might be multiple steps with this request. Right, it's, it's a two part request. And so one is to, um, we would quick claim a portion of the easement that they had previously given us mm -hmm. back to them because they're going to shorten the width of the easement to match the Lions Park easement. We have a wider easement on right. our property now. So I would draft a quick claim deed for that portion uh, between what they gave us and what we actually need right now. So that would be one thing that quick claim deed would be something that would be in front of you at the next meeting to sign, John, mm -hmm. um, and for the board to approve. And then the second part of it is their request to relinquish the right of first refusal. And it's kind of interesting because this right of first refusal that's in this easement actually pertains to the entire property, mm -hmm. correct? So it's a right, right of first refusal on their whole lot, you know, that was tied to this easement. So they're asking us to relinquish that to... Um, voluntarily give that up. So if that's what you want to do, then that would be a separate document that we would do. So it's a two-part request. So do we have to wait for the first one to get done to do the second one? The quick no, not necessarily. So you need a motion, uh, or I will make a motion um, to authorize Amy to um, draft the uh, revised amendment. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. And Wait, then yeah. the second motion will be separate. So we have a second on that? I I'll second. second. I'll second it. And all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. And what was the, the other part? We need a motion. I'll make a motion for, for the quick claim uh, deed. Right of uh, right relinquishing first the right of first refusal. I'll make a motion that we relinquish the right of first refusal. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, small small plug here while we're talking about Lions Park. Um, the Lions Club of Zionsville, uh, who manages the park and, and owns the property, um, is developing their first ever uh, comprehensive master plan for the park that takes into account the new acreage that Jared referenced. Um, and there'll be opportunities for the community to get engaged in that process, uh, the planning process to sort of help guide and steward that land, uh, hopefully for future generations. So just wanted to encourage everybody um, to uh, take the survey. Uh, there's a public survey out right now uh, looking for public feedback uh, that you can find on the project website, which is lionsparkmp.org. So you'll see more, I think, from them and the town. Um, but this project is just rolling out, so we'd love to have all of you engaged. Thanks, Ryan. Did not know that, so appreciate it. Did we ever push that from our social media platforms just to educate the community that this isn't our property, but this is our partner and here's how to participate. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I would propose that to the town's social media. We would include it in our social media as well as our yeah. newsletter. That'd be great. All right. Uh, moving along. Um, 2024 rail 
uh, trail wayfinding purchase. I'm actually going to bump up just one, uh, the Lions Park Connector Trail Design Services. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. I apologize. Yep. No worries. Um, I marked that as incomplete and we had the second thing in there, so I apologize. <laughs> yep. So um, pending the, the ultimate execution of that easement we just discussed with Lions, uh, we would like to move forward with the design, permitting, and construction of that pathway. So within the 2024 budget, we did anticipate to uh, fund that design cost. So uh, before you in the packet was a proposal from REA for the design services, construction administration, permitting, and uh, project oversight for the connector path. So this would reestablish that pathway from the Sycamore Bridge um, all the way up to Elm Street Green and provide a uh, trail in between all of those properties for the community to use. Um, for those services, uh, we have a price point of $85,500, um, and that contract would most likely, it will uh, extend into next year, and we would encumber those funds to cover that uh, for next year as well. And are you anticipating a bid letting in the spring of 25, or do we, do we know when construction would take place? Um, so pending the permitting process, and we're able to make exceptional progress in that, I, I do anticipate a 25 um, bidding of that, um, and then we will very much uh, coordinate with the Lions Park and all their activities concerning construction and what will be out of bounds and for, for what duration. So all those conversations will take place if the agreement is met and the easement is conveyed. Um, so we have a successful project. But uh, we are looking for uh, funding opportunities with uh, some of the grant opportunities that are going around in the village and with ready grants and other projects. So uh, while we are prepared to fund this, uh, it would be great if we could find a partner to help us fund it next year. So for the sake of clarity, you have this in your budget. You have the 85,000 yes. within yes. your budget. Uh, this was an anticipated cost for the design this year. I mean, I don't have an objection. Let's, let's get it going. We have a motion to um, accept REA's uh, bid for design construction for the Lions Park Connector Trail services. So moved. We have a second. I second. Let's do a roll call vote. Uh, Ryan Cambridge. Aye. Chris Barksdale. Aye. Chad Dilley? Aye. Matt Dillon? Bill Burn. Bill Burn, I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Aye. <laughs> and uh, John Slather say aye as well, too. Motion carries. That's right. That's right. Aye. Sorry about that. No problem. I am. Uh, so, all right. Um, now we're going to the 2024 uh, Real 12. <coughs> That's a hard thing to say. Wayfinding purchase. Yes, thank you, John. Uh, if you'll recall, in 2022 and into 2023, the town underwent a wayfinding study to uh, brand a, a, a series of signs that would not only join our park system, but also our streetways and help navigate not only our residents, but also our visitors to our public institutions, our shops, and our parks. Uh, this is our first step at implementing that wayfinding package, and we have sized the package to uh, implement trail and trailhead signage along the entire Big Four corridor. So this would install signage at the Zinesville Trailhead, Overly Warman, Nancy Burton Trailhead, and on and on up until our municipal border. Um, we did anticipate $125,000 out of our park improvements line this year for this project. And I am very happy to say that we received a very competitive bid. Uh, we had two bids uh, received. We did uh, privately solicit six bids uh, for this project. And the uh, IFs, ISF signs for the construction, uh, fabrication, and installation of 18 of these trailhead and trail signs were uh, proposed a total of $59,530. So with your consideration tonight, I would actually like to, um, working with Amy on the legal parameters of the contract to make sure they're compliant with our statutes, um, propose that we enter into this agreement with ISF signs um, in an amount not to exceed $65,000. So after this was publicly or uh, privately solicited, there was one sign location that I think our park system could benefit, and that would be the complete rail trail corridor. So I got a question about this. Um, first of all, comment on a question, comment. Good job soliciting bids, getting a uh, good job with the taxpayers dollars. Um, sometimes I've seen before when bids come in super low, it may be with an entity that we don't know 
and we haven't seen their level of execution. Have you worked with this company before and do you trust the level of execution by it? Um, have not worked with this company before, okay. but uh, was very impressed with the promotional materials that joined the bid. Okay. Uh, they worked for a, large, a lot of large clients, um, so I anticipate their level of service to be that of their peers. Okay. Um, and these specs were very specific within the documents for this okay. quote, so we will hold them to that. Okay. Uh, th as a second part of that same question, was the other, other bid we received significantly more? Uh, more than double. But you're comfortable with that? With Given these specs that we provided within the, the bid and holding them to those parameters, I, I feel comfortable, uh, especially given the other clientele that this uh, IF, ISF Science has uh, worked with. I mean, the pricing looks really good. I don't have any personal familiarity with them, but I don't think that means anything. <laughs> um, I think, you know, ultimately, as, as is the case with almost any construction project, right, it's how good are your documents and your specs. So if we have good specs on what we want and the performance, you know, of the different materials and all that stuff, then I don't have a concern. Um, so post uh, carriage bolts, everything was very specific within that uh, bid document. And I think a reason they are able to have a lower price was that the, uh, I believe all of the services from start of the project to the end are in-house. And I'm not sure that other uh, competing sign manufacturers have that same capacity. Where are they out of? Just uh, Indianapolis. Okay. 6468 Rucker Road. Yep. 220. Yeah, I'll echo Chad's um, thank you for um, getting the bids and looking out for taxpayer dollars. I say we would move forward. I think if you want to make a motion to move forward, just make it um, contingent upon the amendment of a couple of the contract terms regarding timing of payment. And um, we've identified those terms that needed to be changed. Jared communicated with them. They're okay with it. It's just not reflected in the draft we have in front of you. Okay. So I'd make a motion to approve the contract, not as presented, but as negotiated between Amy and Jared and the lowest bidder. Second. All right. Do a uh, roll call vote. Uh, Ryan Cambridge. Aye. Chris Parksdale. Aye. Chad Dilley. Aye. Matt Milburn. Aye. I say, John Sutter said, say aye as well. Motion carries. Can, can I just ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. question. The contract says 59.5. Jared, you asked for up to 65? Yes. So. Um, that would be for a change order uh, for so, one additional sign. So we actually are approving that, right? Not up, up to, to 65,000. Not as yeah. the contract has Correct. presented. Yes. Okay. Thank God. So, yeah, as, as negotiated between them. Yeah, those look great. I mean, the yeah, good yeah. signage adds a lot to a trail system. Yeah, it'd be so. fantastic. Uh, sure. Just for the community, I'll share. I'm sorry I didn't share. Oh, this yeah, the, yeah. Thank you, Jared. So these are the signs we're talking about. Uh, this is a trailhead and trail kiosk, so very similar. Uh, it will be uh, the seven-foot I-beam you see before you will be constructed of aluminum and then painted to reflect rusted rail ties. Uh, these signs will be 3M aluminum, uh, double-sided, well, two signs per post, per type of sign. Um, if you look, the differential there is that our trailhead signs do not have the hierarchy of yielding. Um, so that's really the only difference. So this is pretty much the same project. One post will have three signs, the others will have four. Thank you. Thank Good. you all. Yep. All right. Uh, playground messaging boards. Uh, so one of the priorities of our park system is to not only improve accessibility and physical access to our park system, but also cognitive access. We want to be sure that we are offering as welcoming of a space as we can uh, for our residents. So um, these have been on our radar for a little bit, and uh, I will defer to Mindy Murdoch to talk about the specifics because she spearheaded this project. But ultimately, our goal is to incorporate five of these uh, displays, one for each of our playgrounds, including Carpenter Nature Preserve. Uh, these signs can be branded to match the aesthetics of each of those playgrounds and customized so that they'll have features that are actually on site. So. The Mulberry Fields uh, messaging board will have 
an identifier for a restroom as well as the splash pad, open fields, and et cetera. So I will defer to Mindy to talk a little bit more about the specifics of this initiative. Okay, so before you actually in the picture you can see what we're talking about is a communication board. Um, these are, there's various different ones that you see. There are ones that uh, a lot of the playground equipment now has, um, but we wanted to get something that we could personalize for each of our playgrounds since our playgrounds are somewhat unique, especially our nature spaces and especially with Carpenter and the nature play space that will be going into there. So um, I was looking for uh, companies where we had the ability to actually kind of do some personalization, do some changes to their um, where required actually creating our own buttons basically uh, for the equipment that we have. And so the one company that I did based on just ways that we can personalize, working with them, um, looking at some of the different, uh, you know, different organizations they had worked on for previous boards is the Smarty Symbols boards, and that's what we are looking at here. Um, so the quote that we were getting was for, um, for five boards, so that would be all of our current playgrounds as well as for one for Carpenter. Um, nature Preserve or playground there. And these are, um, they would be, single-sided, but we can also print them double-sided if we feel that in the location we need that. But the nice thing with this one is that we have the ability to actually go in there and do some personalization where if, you know, the playground does not have a slide for say, we can pull that out and put something else in its place. Um, we would be looking at just purchasing the signs and not any of the, um, mounting and then look at doing that in-house um, based on the location. You know, it might be something that's mounted right there on a fence or might look at something that's very similar to the wayfinding signage that's going in, so in the future. So, um, you know, happy to answer any questions for you guys, but hoping that we can get approval um, because these are personalized. I don't know yet until we start to get into all the nuts and bolts for each playground. Um, you know, how much personalization we need to do. So I am asking if we can, you know, the quote we got for all of them was a little under nine, but I'm asking if we can approve up to 10,000, um, and that would be for the five different communication boards for the playgrounds. And do we have budgeted funds to construct the required mounting frames or posts or whatever is necessary to get these up? Yes, yeah, so if you'll recall, um, in 2022 and 2023, we were the recipients of a $100,000 uh, donation from an anonymous donor in our community. And uh, $50,000 each year from that was pledged towards parks and park improvements. So from our allocation this year, it would fund this project. There's nothing tied to donor intent or anything like that? Or nope, lines. Uh, solely at our discretion. I, for me, I mean, I appreciate your attempt to make the parks more inclusive. Um, thank you. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, well, as a as somebody with a, um, I have a son that has a proxy of speech, so this is a, a real cool thing that I think for our community. Well, I think it's a great example too of demonstrating that accessibility is not just about ADA, right? That universal accessibility is about experience and communication, and I think this is a cool way to do it. So I'd make a motion to approve up to $10,000 for Mindy and her team to get these signs designed and printed and delivered. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, moving along, um, the next item on the agenda is the holiday bridge uh, railing design. So uh, as many of you know, recently Holiday Farms has joined our community and with that we have uh, been the recipients of an additional segment of Trail Beyond Turkey Foot, um, exact name still to be determined. Um, <laughs> we've been calling it Turkey Foot Trail on that side. Um, but as that trail heads towards Eagle Creek, there is this uh, beautiful bridge that um, is on the holiday, the former Holiday Road and as you pass over the creek, that portion of the former uh, road 
was transferred to the town, so it would be a public pathway. So in working with the Department of Public Works, we are looking to turn this into a formally open and public uh, trail in our community. So um, to do that, we need to um, update any amenities and make sure they're up to our standards. Um, so this would be for the design services uh, to construct a compliant pedestrian rated um, railing to adjoin uh, this, this bridge that has railing that is car rated. So there are different standards as far as the gaps between the uh, bars and things like that. And the proposal before you is for $2,500 um, for the design of what is actually going to fit and uh, retrofit this uh, bridge, as well as soliciting bids for that project. Um, so again, partnering with REA um, for this uh, small design project that would lead to the uh, later purchase of those railings and installation. So it was $2,000? $2,500, so um, basically a favor uh, for all the work they would put into this. And, and technically, do you, do you need our approval to... Yeah. Execute that um, to enter into an agreement. Oh yeah, right. Okay, so if it's a straight the, up procurement the agreement, it's not yeah, a, it, it not could be fifty dollars. I'm, I'm coming to you. So <laughs> this is the one that is behind the part three four. I don't know how familiar you are with it, right? But behind you can see it from the part three fours, right? It's the existing red iconic bridge, right? Yes, right over Eagle Creek. Because for the sake of clarity, you're not changing the red iconic portion of that. You're just putting rails up to the yeah. Correct, and, and, and within the spec, it would be to powder coat those to match red. Okay. So uh, do we have a motion to accept the contract with REI for design services for the holiday trail pedestrian railing design services? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you all. Uh, moving on, uh, we have one memorial bench uh, for your consideration this evening, and this would be a memorial bench near the Spring Knoll community or Carter Station. Um, so we have plenty of spaces in that area that we could benefit from a bread or a, a bench. Um, so uh, with your approval, we will work towards that memorial donation and get that installed. Always well, good to have more seats available for people. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a motion to... Um, uh, took the memorial bench application. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right. Old business. Mulberry Fields modification request. Thank you. As you recall, uh, in previous months, uh, we have been partnering with the Zionsville Rugby Club uh, for many years, and recently they have requested to modify Mulberry Fields. Um, to allow permanent footers for their goalposts to go up each season. So uh, just for public knowledge, I'll share those images once more. Um, so this would be uh, entering into an agreement to allow them to uh, perform that work on park property, um, obviously protecting us as a park board in town with that installation, listing us as additionally insured, not adding to our liability. Um, Sorry, let me pull that up. So the proposal would be to place uh, four footers within fields one and two. Um, if you go out there now, you can see the field is striped. So uh, the approximate locations would be at the goals and goals of those areas. Um, during operations, while the poles are up, they would have the fall protection around the base. But, um, and there is a diagram of what would be installed concerning the dimensions of that concrete footer and the sleeve as well as the ground level. So um, what's equally as important is what uh, these footers will impact when they're not in use. So one of the terms was to ensure that it would be below ground level and they have actually agreed to uh, bury these footers every year and then relocate them when they need them in the spring. Um, so within that agreement, uh, they would have to uh, cover the footers, cap and cover at the end of each season and uh, place RTF uh, sod on top um, for seamless integration back into the field. So uh, a agreement was circulated uh, recently uh, to you all through email and um, with your consideration and approval, uh, we will work with Amy to uh, 
get the final terms of that negotiated and then executed. You have Overall, three, our, our proposed agreement, but this hasn't been sent to the rugby club yet, so Correct. there very well may be some tweaks so you us to negotiate this and John to sign if you so choose. Do you have any questions or concerns? No, this is a good, once again, good thing to continue the multi-use for this. Um, well, I guess one question is if, um, will they allow, access, you know, for some reason, if we or another team wanted to put something, would they allow, you know, that, you know say a football team wanted to put a goalpost there, would they allow that, you know, use, utilize that? Or um, is that? We didn't define exclusive use, so okay, it would be... Um, to the public, but um, maybe we should discuss that with them, their receptiveness to that. I think right now the way it's worded is ultimately the decision of whether or not we would do that remains solely with the park board. Yep. Yes. So yeah. it would be up to us, I think. Yeah. Well, I'll make a motion to uh, authorize Amy and Jared to um, negotiate that agreement and execute it. Okay, second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right. Uh, other board items? Anyone have anything they'd like to discuss? Or I, I do have one item uh, because we're never stopping after the packet is sent out. So yeah. um, uh, for some of you uh, board members from this year, you might not be aware, but um, we as a park board have been approached about a land donation in Union Township. So upon accepting this donation, we would this would be our second uh, property in Union Township. Um, it is just down the road from Carpenter Nature Preserve. Um, and uh, equally exciting, it does um, butt up to adjoining school property. So envisioning the uh, symbiosis that we have with Zion Nature Sanctuary and Eagle Elementary and the excitement of what could be at this site with that same type of uh, shared space. Um, it's really exciting for us as a park system, but ultimately the opportunity to maintain and secure and conserve 60 acres is equally as exciting. So um, one challenge with this site was that there was not direct access from any uh, public road. So that was uh, something that led to the exploration of how could we get to this parcel. So um, we have been negotiating with the schools uh, for a 50 foot easement uh, on their property to get back to the, to the uh, park in which we would develop the road. They could potentially piggyback on that as an emergency entrance or their primary entrance. Uh, we could have our signage within that, and then it would ultimately lead to the park. So um, the school board um, has not heard this proposal yet, but as we negotiate the terms, um, the school would want to be made whole with any negotiations, any costs associated with this. And uh, last year we did approve $5,000 towards that, and um, we were requested to also authorize any future expenses that might be associated with this. Um, so the request before you this evening would be to authorize additional expenses associated with this execution of an option for an easement uh, with the school board. So the option is the first step. Um, should this donation fall through, we would obviously not ever execute that option and nothing would happen. But by enacting the option, we would have the ability to um, prescribe a full easement as described within the option at a later date once that land is secured. So this land would, would, be, would be in a life estate, so we would not receive it um, until after the donor would pass. So the, do, you know, we authorized $5,000 last year. I, do we have a sense of what we need to plan for? I mean, I don't want to have an unlimited authorization. Right. Mm -hmm. right. um, yeah. So, you know, like, is it another 5,000? Is it, do we do up to 5,000 and then revisit it? Well, it's a not to, the request is a not to exceed 15000 okay. total, including the cost that they've incurred so far, which you approved up to 5000 and then they've requested any additional future costs. Now, we don't really expect many additional future costs. All the documents are drafted and ready to go. The um, option to acquire the easement and the easement itself at this point. So I think they just wanted some assurance that they would be made whole in the future if they need to invest you know, more time and energy in this. But... But I did talk with the, the so, school representatives. About sure. That, so, so would that would that would this additional authorization cover fees necessary if we were to execute that option in the future, or is this just to negotiate the option to get it, you know, sort of codified today? This is just anything related to the option up until the time that you would execute it. And for costs actually incurred in connection with the easement. At and, all. 
And I did clarify, so after the documents are kind of finalized and made whole, uh, there would not be additional cost when reviewed before the school board packet. So that is a different attorney, a different, uh, it's, a, it's a retainer service. Um, so the cost really would end once we get to the finish line and we are Got that it. close. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and a so lot of the uh, recording and things like that um, would be within our retainer with uh, Amy's services, so. Do you have this budgeted for this year? Yes, we can accommodate it this year and then we would plan for it next year. So you need a motion to not to exceed 15,000 for the uh, right of way well, reimbursement, reimbursement of, of, of cost to the school. To school, to school. Yep. And it's a reimbursement of actual costs, I think, mean, so it can yep. be far less than 15. You're just approving like that. But not to exceed. Not to exceed. Right. We have a motion? Uh, so moved. We have a second. I'll second. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, any other uh, business? I don't have anything that we need to hash out tonight, but it's something that I would like to have a better grasp on maybe for future meetings. There's just maybe a, an update again on Carpenter, the activation of Carpenter and the operating expenses associated with Carpenter and how that ticks and ties to some sort of long range financial plan that the city has, right? Um, I see this piece of property there, which probably is going to require some upkeep. Carpenter is a big asset, which we're very fortunate to have that will require a lot of upkeep. And as the footprint continues to grow, I want to make sure there's some strategy around that and that um, we have those conversations sooner rather than later. So that way we don't have this beautiful asset that we're actually not resourcing or, or have that appropriate um, resource with that. So, um, I guess I'd leave it up to you, John and Jared, to work through, like, at what point in time does this hit the agenda? How does that work? But that something coming into this, I don't feel like I have a good grasp of, and I'd feel a little bit more comfortable um, for the future of our operations if we knew where we were going. Absolutely. Yep. So uh, a lot of those preliminary numbers were uh, researched when we were proposing the bond. Okay. But uh, mm -hmm. since time has passed, we can certainly firm those up and, and have a be better just picture. Educational to bring everybody up to speed, right? Sure. That's yeah, always one of the um, you know the board. You know, some board members are only here for a year. Yeah. Some of us are for four. Yeah. And right now, you know, a lot of this is there's only really two and a half of us that've been here for you know more than a year. So uh, or two years. So um, yeah, totally understand that. So. And, it's, and it, the intent behind that and the, my, where my heart is at with that and my head is at with that is I want us to be good financial stewards and I want this to be awesome too, right? So yep. how can that be both in and just spread it out so then the community is aware too. Like, so. Absolutely, yeah. sure. Well, we have, you know, um, a number of years, right, before Carpenter is publicly open. But I also think, Jared, I'm probably, probably a test that we have a number of years of budget deficits we're trying to make up, right? So... I think as we look forward to the future department and how, you know, and how we need to operate and the level that we're operating at and sophistication and sort of engagement, which is much different historically, I, I think there are changes to the park budget that probably need to be made in order to plan for that. And it'll be much easier to do that incrementally as opposed to waiting five years to your point yeah. and then finding out where, you know. And there's there's a lot of competing forces of that, right? Because yep. the tax base, anybody that's lived in Zionville, right? It's very residential. It's not commercial. So... Um, there's a lot of competing interests with a growing residential footprint structure with your public safety and things like that. So just having a big picture conversation, because I get the feeling that Zionsville continues to grow and it's primarily residential growth that we're seeing that that's going to cause some constraints that we need to make sure that um, all city leadership is just aligned on. Sure. Town leadership, excuse me. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I have one final question that... I don't know necessarily needs an answer tonight, but do we know with Overly Warman yet when the contractor is coming, if when the contractor is coming back? So we had a meeting with them on Friday to once again go over the punch list. We had the subcontractor who was doing the plantings there as well uh, for the replacement of those items. Is that Cardno? Uh, formerly Cardno, now Stantec. Stantec. Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, I believe they were proposing a timeline at the end of this month for those plantings to go into place um, so before spring and summer get here um, what there was one change so part of the reason the uh, several of those mature mature trees around the playground died was just because 
potentially the acidity of the soil and the, the, the mix there. So we're substituting some of those pin oaks for bur oaks, which uh, are a little bit more robust, but ultimately the, the um, reforestation that was staked poorly and the prairie plantings will all be reestablished and fortified uh, before we close out that portion. Uh, we also have several items concerning gra draining, drainage, um, grading, and swales throughout the park that are on the punch list. Um, we have a new project manager from their team that is... This is a new one to the other new one? Yes, okay. yes. I believe we're on the fourth or fifth, but... Um, this is fun. Uh, he is to propose the timeline for when all those improvements will be complete. I just want to make sure uh, that's, I guess, where I'm, you know, we're, we're in this window where, you know, it, it makes a pretty big difference whether we do some of these improvements between now and May versus July and August when we're, you know, really, I mean, at that point, might as well wait. So, yeah. um, you know, we, we authorized a pretty substantial payment to them last go around. I, and I'd love to see as much of this work wrapped up as humanly possible. I mean, it's not, this is not a complicated project to complete. Yeah. So I, I would like to see them it out of there, you know, by the end of May, if at all possible, um, so that we can make sure that whatever improvements to grading and turf and yeah. plant material have a, a chance to survive the summer. Yeah. Um, I know there was talk last year of them doing that, and, and they said they would, and then they missed the window for seeding. And, you know, that was, I don't want to see that happen again. So. Completely agree. We'll hold them to that. Okay, that's all I got. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, well, we got claims. claims. Oh, we got claims. Have a chance to review claims. That. Yeah, that's an important one. <laughs> okay. And we get a chance to review? I don't have any questions. I do not either. So, do you have a motion to approve claims as presented? So um, moved. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Ryan Cambridge? Aye. Uh, Chris Gar Barksdale? Aye. Chad Dilley? Aye. Matt Milburn? Aye. Aye. John Slevers say aye as well, too. Motion carries. Now, do we have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Say nay. Okay. Meeting adjourned. We'll see you uh, May, uh, May, what is that? Um, oh, the second, the second May, second Wednesday in May. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Do we need to sign? We need to sign. Yeah, we're going to work. <laughs>